Are you ready to question everything you thought you knew about vampires? From an 18th century Serbian village plagued by the undead, to a modern-day Bordeaux wine cellar with a horrifying secret, and even a nationwide blood shortage in 1940s America that defies explanation, these are tales that will make you reconsider the boundaries between myth and reality. So grab some garlic, hold on to your crucifix, and let's dive into the chilling world of vampires. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to our channel to ensure you never miss out on our daily explorations into the mysterious and unexplained. Now let's begin. Story 1. The Vampiric Outbreak In the small Serbian village of Medveda in the early 18th century, whispers of the undead were rampant. Local villagers spoke in hushed tones about Arnold Powell, a soldier turned farmer who had an unnerving tale to tell. Arnold had served in the Austrian military fighting the Ottomans, and it was during his stint in the army that he first encountered the concept of vampirism. While posted in a small Greek village, Arnold was out on patrol when he was suddenly attacked. A gaunt figure with glowing red eyes lunged at him from the shadows. Reacting swiftly, Arnold drove his bayonet through the creature's heart, ending its ungodly life. The villagers advised him to burn the corpse and consume its ashes mixed with water as an antidote. Heeding their advice, Arnold performed the ritualistic burning and took the ash water concoction, hoping to evade the vampiric curse. Feeling he had avoided a grim fate, Arnold returned to his home village of Medveda and took up farming, attempting to put his days of war and supernatural encounters behind him. But peace was short-lived. Arnold was tilling his fields one day when he lost control of his plow. The heavy equipment overturned, fatally wounding him. His death was sudden and unexpected, leaving the community in shock. As he was laid to rest, villagers remembered Arnold's tales from Greece and couldn't help but speculate that the curse he thought he'd evaded had finally caught up with him. Shortly after his burial, villagers started reporting livestock mysteriously drained of blood. Sightings of Arnold wandering his fields during twilight began to circulate. Talk of him being a vampire intensified when people he had recently visited started dying of mysterious ailments. Fearing an outbreak of vampirism, the villagers waited 40 days, as was customary, and then decided to exhume Arnold's body. The crowd gathered around the grave was horrified by what they saw. Arnold's corpse was suspiciously well-preserved, new nails had grown, and fresh blood was found in his mouth. Convinced that Arnold was a vampire, the villagers did what they believed they had to do. A stake was driven through his heart. A gruesome gurgling sound echoed from the corpse, and then his body was burned to ashes. But the series of eerie events didn't end there. The plague of deaths continued, now even affecting those who had handled Arnold's corpse. Further exhumations revealed more vampires, and the ritual of staking and burning became a grim routine, enveloping the village in a fog of dread and suspicion. Eventually, even the Habsburg authorities got wind of the unsettling occurrences in Medveda, they sent two military surgeons to investigate, who surprisingly verified the villagers' claims. Their comprehensive report became one of the most thoroughly documented instances of vampirism in history, cementing the Arnold Pale case into the annals of unsettling folklore. Today, the tale of Arnold Pale remains a chilling story in Serbian legends, a haunting narrative that defies both time and death. Though centuries have passed, those who hear this tale are left to wonder, can the roots of an ancient fear ever truly be vanquished? Or do they simply lie dormant, waiting for the right moment to strike anew? And so if you ever find yourself in the lands where Arnold Pale once walked, heed the setting sun and the murmurs of villagers. For some tales, though buried deep in history, never truly die. They linger, etched into the very soil, an everlasting legacy of fear and death. Story 2. The Wine Cellar In a small rural town not far from Bordeaux, France, a string of mysterious disappearances had plagued the community for the past five years. People of all ages vanished, some while out walking, others from the very beds they slept in. The town was on edge, but no one had any concrete evidence or leads. That was until one fateful night when an elderly man, Henri, was out walking his dog. A disheveled and bleeding man later identified as Jack, 
stumbled out of the woods and ran up to him. Henri initially thought Jack had been in a terrible car accident, but the story Jack told was far more chilling. When the police arrived, they treated Jack's wounds and took him to the hospital. Jack recounted his horrifying experience. He had been out jogging at sunset, taking his usual route through a wooded path near his home. As he ran, he noticed a man coming from the opposite direction. The man was tall, slim, and oddly wearing a suit. Just as Jack was about to pass him, the man grabbed him with inhuman strength and slammed him to the ground, knocking him unconscious. When Jack regained consciousness, he found himself lying on a cold stone floor. The air was damp and musty, and the only light came from a flickering bulb hanging from the ceiling. He felt a sharp pain in his neck and arms and realized he was bleeding. Panic surged through him as he took in his surroundings, a cellar filled with wooden shelves holding bottles of wine. His heart pounding, Jack forced himself to his feet. He felt weak and disoriented, but the adrenaline coursing through his veins propelled him forward. He stumbled across the cellar, his eyes darting around for an exit. Finally, he found a wooden door slightly ajar. With trembling hands, he pushed it open and stepped out into the night. Jack found himself in a dense forest, the canopy of trees blocking out most of the moonlight. He had no idea where he was or how to get back to civilization. Every sound, the rustling leaves, the distant hoot of an owl, made him jump. His instincts told him to run, so he did, pushing through the underbrush, his breaths coming in ragged gasps. As he ran, he couldn't shake off the feeling that he was being watched. He heard twigs snap behind him and felt an indescribable presence as if something or someone was trailing him. The terror was overwhelming, but it fueled him to run faster, even as his legs felt like they were about to give out. Finally, he saw a glimmer of light through the trees. Bursting out of the forest, he found himself on a road. That's when he saw Henri, an elderly man walking his dog. Relief washed over him as he ran up to Henri, his body covered in cuts and his clothes torn. Upon retracing Jack's steps, the police discovered the hidden cellar deep within the woods. The door was ajar, just as Jack had left it in his frantic escape. Inside, the cellar was filled with wooden shelves holding an array of bottles, all meticulously labeled and sealed. At first glance, it looked like an ordinary wine cellar, but the atmosphere was heavy with an unsettling aura. The police collected several bottles as evidence, along with other items in the room that seemed out of place for a wine cellar. Surgical tools, restraints, and what appeared to be a makeshift operating table. They also discovered a hidden chamber behind a false wall where they found the remains of multiple missing persons, some identified and some not. The state of the bodies suggested they had been drained of blood. Back at the police station, forensic tests were conducted on the contents of the bottles. To the horror of everyone involved, the tests confirmed that the bottles were filled with human blood, each one a different type, meticulously labeled just like fine wine. Despite the overwhelming evidence, the police were unable to tie any suspects to the gruesome discoveries. The wounds on the victims and the circumstances of Jack's attack led some to speculate that someone was not just killing these people, but was doing so in a manner that mimicked that of vampires. The town was left in a state of shock and horror. Some say it's proof that vampires walk among us, while others think it's the work of a deranged individual obsessed with vampire lore. Either way, the case remains unsolved, and the people of the town are left to wonder who, or what, is responsible for these gruesome acts. Today, if you venture near that wooded path, you'll find it deserted. The locals avoid it, especially as the sun begins to set. And so, the legend of the Bordeaux blood collector lives on, a grim tale whispered in hushed tones, serving as a chilling reminder that sometimes the monsters we fear may be more real than we'd like to believe. Story 3, The Vampire Raids In 1940, as World War II raged on overseas, the United States found itself grappling with a crisis of a different kind, a sudden and inexplicable shortage of O-negative blood in hospitals across the nation. While the country was not yet involved in the war, preparations were underway, and the medical community was already feeling the strain. Blood was being stockpiled for the inevitable entry into the conflict, but something, or someone, was depleting the reserves. The first incident occurred in a hospital in New York City, 
The night staff arrived one morning to find the blood bank's refrigerators emptied of all O-negative blood. Security footage revealed nothing, and there were no signs of a break-in. A month later, a similar incident was reported in Chicago. Then another month passed, and Los Angeles and Boston hospitals reported the same mysterious depletion of O-negative blood from their reserves. Each time the blood bank was raided and each time only the O-negative blood was taken, the authorities were baffled. The FBI was called in to investigate, but they were as stumped as everyone else. The heists were dubbed the Vampire Raids by the press, a name that stuck and only added to the growing sense of unease. As the raids continued, patterns began to emerge. They always occurred on the night of a full moon, and they seemed to follow a path, moving from the East Coast to the Midwest, then to the South and the West. The authorities tried to anticipate the raiders' next move, but to no avail. Whoever, or whatever, was behind the raids seemed to be one step ahead. In a desperate bid to solve the mystery, the government consulted with experts in various fields, criminal psychology, folklore, and even a psychic. Some suggested that the raids were the work of a cult, while others speculated about the involvement of foreign spies. But no theory could be substantiated, and the raids continued unabated. Then, in June of 1940, the raids suddenly stopped. Just as mysteriously as they had begun, they ceased, leaving behind a nation on edge and a medical community in crisis. The stockpiled blood had been severely depleted, affecting medical procedures nationwide and causing a ripple effect that would be felt for years to come. Despite an exhaustive investigation, the culprits were never found, and the case remains one of the most perplexing unsolved mysteries in American history. Over the years, many theories have been proposed, from the involvement of secret societies to supernatural explanations, but none have been proven. The legacy of the vampire raids had a profound impact on the medical community, leading to reforms in blood bank security and spurring research into synthetic blood substitutes. But the identity and motives of those behind the raids remain a mystery to this day, a chilling enigma that continues to captivate and confound. As for the O-negative blood, its disappearance was never explained. Some say it was used in dark rituals, others suggest it was sold on the black market, and still others believe it was taken by beings not of this world. But whatever the truth, the events of 1940 serve as a haunting reminder that sometimes the most terrifying mysteries are those that are never solved. So which of these tales sent shivers down your spine and made you question the line between myth and reality? Was it the 18th century Serbian village gripped by a vampiric outbreak, or perhaps the Bordeaux wine cellar that held a secret far more terrifying than aged grapes? And let's not forget the nationwide blood shortage in 1940s America that defies all logical explanation. The story that steps out of the realm of folklore to become a haunting reality is the tale of Arnold Powell in the Serbian village of Medveda. After serving in the Austrian military and allegedly encountering a vampire in Greece, Arnold returned to his village of Medveda. He died in a farming accident, but soon after his burial, villagers reported livestock drained of blood and mysterious deaths among people Arnold had recently visited. Fearing vampirism, they exhumed his body found it suspiciously well-preserved, and performed a ritualistic staking and burning. Despite this, the mysterious deaths continued, leading to more exhumations and rituals. The Habsburg authorities even sent military surgeons to investigate, and their report became one of the most thoroughly documented instances of vampirism, fueling vampire hysteria in Europe. It said people who don't like the video or subscribe to the channel are vampires' favorite victims. You wouldn't want that to be you, would you? Better like and subscribe just in case. Do it.